make him admit, yes, I'm a sinner. And all that he means is nobody's perfect. He does not really go through any conviction of sin. Why? Because the instrument for conviction of sin is the law. It is the law that makes us understand our need of the gospel. Then, it is also, as I've said, applicable to humanity because one use of the law is for restraint of evil in society. So there is a common grace role. And that's Romans 13 in the context of the powers that God ordained, that they bear the sword. And now, how it applies to society. Now, it's interesting that in application to society, uh, we do not see the Apostle Paul using for Roman society, which is pagan, that they should mandate the first tablet. It is not for government to mandate the first tablet. Now, it is still a norm for all humanity, but not via government. When it comes to via government, there you have the six commandments of the second table of the law. And that's restraint in society. And finally, the use of the law is for the believer's sanctification. This is the special grace role. How do we know we are living the holy life? One of the standards, not the only one, but one of the standards is that we obey the commandments of God. So the New Testament assertion of the binding nature of the Decalogue are plenty. And I want you to study for your reference. I'm not asking for any outline at this time, uh, but for your reading, because these are good arguments for the continuing and binding nature of the Decalogue is Richard Barcelos in defense of the Decalogue, Philip Graham Reichen written in stones, and Sam Waldron with Barcelos, a Reformed Baptist manifesto. So they all argue, I think, quite uh, persuasively that the Decalogue is binding. So the law remains a rule of life of the believer. Again, not the only rule, there are others, but it is a basic binding rule. And therefore, Christian obedience to the law, and what makes it different now for the Christian is we obey the law not to be justified, not to earn merits, we obey the law with gospel motives. So we separate that from legalism. Because we have been justified in Christ, we now delight in obeying the law. First John chapter 5, uh, this is how we know we are born of God, that His commandments are not burdensome. So therefore, it's still the commandments of God. And for us as pastors and those of you aspiring to be a pastor, we said in the original lecture, lecture number one, one role we have is still we are ethicists. As much as we are theologians, we are ethicists. And as an ethicist, the pastor must master creation as a doctrine and principle of morality. And then the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, in the face of sharp contemporary attacks, both on creation and on the Decalogue, and unfortunately, even among evangelicals, the attacks are emanating. And we need to establish these two standards of morality. We will see more, but these two standards are fundamental. Creation mandates and the Ten Commandments. Any question? question you can again use the audio video or the chat and please identify your church in place pastor uh, Jesse po Jesse oh Jesse <laughs> um, okay na po bang sabihin na kaya binding pa rin yung uh, Ten Commandments ngayon ay dahil uh, sa simula pa lang bago pa magkasala si Adam and Eve ay eh, ito na yung intention ng Diyos uh, sa tao well, already the character of God is there. And if we rightly describe the commandments as expression of God's character, even though they were not yet codified until it 
they were codified in Moses, then the character of God is already what it is, and therefore these are the standards. In other words, God could not have given a different or contrary commandments than what He gave in the Ten Commandments because they are expression of His character. They are not just God's sovereign will. Now, there are those who think that they are God's sovereign choice. God could have defined another good thing. For example, God could have defined that this is wrong when in the Ten Commandments it is right or vice versa. And we reject that. The Ten Commandments are expression of God's immutable holiness, righteousness, and goodness, not simply of His sovereign will. Other questions? <clears throat> From Francis Thailand, Pastor, regarding the, con the continuity of the moral law in the New Testament, does that make us, in some sense, theonomists? No, because we are not making it a government mandate. Uh, theonomists would like the government to make the Mosaic law part of the law of the land. Uh, and we reject that. Uh, but the Ten Commandments are part of the sanctification of believers and a restraint on society in terms of the second table of the law. It is not for the government to mandate or legislate the first table of the law. Uh, from Charlie Tagok, Sir, anong materials po gamitin sa outline sa Christian ethics? What do you mean? Submit an outline, hindi yung reading. The reading is that of uh, John Murray. Uh, Principles of Conduct, Chapter 8. That's the material. In other words, you already have the material to outline. From Jem. Good afternoon po, Pastor Noel. Jem uh, from STRBC, Santo Tomas, Batangas. Regarding po sa Ten Commandments, makakukonsider pa po bang sin ang pagsisinungaling? Kung ginawa ito para sa higher good like pagliligtas ng buhay, kagaya po ng tagpo sa Exodus, we will consider that in another, in fact, the last moral standard we will be considering is hierarchy ethics. And so if you can suspend for a while the issue because that's controversial and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to mar the discussion on an important issue like the Decalogue with a controversial issue, which we will have anyway when we come to that lesson on hierarchy ethics. So, suspend that for a while. For Mars, can we say that the Beatitudes or Sermon on the Mount was derived from the Ten Commandments or is it another ethical standard to follow? As I was explaining, Jesus was giving the right application of the Decalogue, which the Pharisees corrupted by simply externalizing the meaning. That's why what Jesus is saying, this is what really the Ten Commandments means. Uh, how do you commit adultery? Uh, it's not just by cohabiting with someone other than your spouse. Uh, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you already violated the command, you shall not commit adultery. So he is not changing the Ten Commandments. He is not giving or introducing a new ethical standard. He is simply applying rightly as they should be applied which the Pharisees have distorted uh, the, the due application of the law, which is including the internal state. And this is not a new thing in the Sermon on the Mount. For example, I mentioned adultery. Job 31 verse 1, Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not gaze at a maiden. In other words, the word he used there is that of looking intently. And the assumption is that of looking with lust. So even in the Old Testament, you already have the equivalent of what Jesus said. It includes the state of the heart. So it's not a new ethical standard, but simply the right application of the same standard of the Decalogue. From Joel Tabliga, from COC, regarding the other Old Testament laws prohibiting 
tattoos on the body can this also be applied to the Christian uh, again uh, there are many laws that pertain to Israel that we should not insist as binding because they are meant for Israel to distinguish them from the rest of the nations. Uh, so I will not, uh, because if you begin to apply such things, you should apply the whole. And if we reject that any of the ceremonial or uh, the civil aspects of the law are to be binding, and I say that they are not binding, though there are principles we can draw from them, but the Ten Commandments, himself, God Himself has singled out as that which is the defining uh, substance of the covenant. So the ceremonies and other regulations, they were fulfilled in the crucifixion of Christ and according to Colossians 2 they were done away with uh, and so we will not apply those that belong to Israel as a nation uh, but we're singling out the Decalogue uh, from Larry how can we guard our church to become legalistic in observing the Sabbath or Lord's Day and not becoming Sabbath breaker well determine that the purpose of the Sabbath is to rest from the things of mere creation, uh, meaning livelihood and those things, and then have a time to rest your body and at the same time, time to relish the uh, work of God. And that's what we call worship. So, when a person, when a Christian becomes so focused on the hours in which he must observe the Lord's Day and it becomes sometimes a controversy, is it 12 to 12 or should we go back to the old time frame of 6 to 6? When they begin to discuss in this way, you can be pretty much sure that they are becoming legalistic. They are missing the good because they're so intent on the externals. The good of the Sabbath is so that we may rest from the livelihood of this creaturely uh, world so that we may relish the things of God. <clears throat> and Joshua, what can you say about the Roman Catholic Decalogue which changes the second to the tenth commandment? Well, I, I know I a particular priest who was converted when he discovered that the Ten Commandments uh, that the Decalogue was changed by the Roman Catholic position and he wrote a book about that uh, and there's no defense to this so what they did was to break the Tenth Commandment as we know it and make them 9 and 10 so you have two thou shalt not covet commandments in the Catholic version so that they can remove, deliberately remove the second commandment of not making a graven image. Now during the iconoclast controversy in the Middle Ages, what happened was, and the reason why it became popular, was to draw saints on windows and on walls because they say technically they are not making a graven image which would require sculpting <laughs> so they just drew uh, these are legalistic technicalities uh, but the command is there you cannot remove it uh, from Ron Paolo is gathering of the saints in local churches part of the active motive rule connected to the fourth commandment uh, well that will be more New Testament standard uh, and we will see as I've said it's not just the Ten Commandments uh, the Ten Commandments are basic to our moral standard but there are others and in fact in the next lessons we will be considering those others and that includes New Testament standards which includes church uh, covenant church life and so I'm I'm taking the assembly requirement from the New Testament not from the Ten Commandments
uh, from Ron Paulo or uh, from Joel Tabdiga. Pa- regarding the outline assignment, pero po ba ng itong format and how are well, you know an outline? Uh, it's like what you have in my lessons. You have headings, and you already have the headings in the reading material. And what you need to do for each heading is summarize what the author is saying. That's the outline. You don't just copy what the author said. You summarize in your own words. So it should not take uh, more than back-to-back one sheet of paper. Uh, that's an outline. From Joven, ACCF Lipa City. Pastor, what is uh, meant by Paul when he said the letter of the law kills? Well, he's comparing old covenant and new covenant in 2 Corinthians 3. And here, by the way, I should have put this as part of my, I think I did, no. Uh, as part of the binding nature of the Decalogue, we, are to, we know that the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, are written by God. In the Old Covenant, tablets of stone. Now, the argument of the Apostle Paul is that in the New Covenant, and in fact, this is what you have in Jeremiah 31 in the promise of the new covenant it will now be written upon tablets of the heart so the idea here is that uh, it is both God writing on the tablets as much as in the new covenant it is now being written upon the hearts the question is what is written well, whatever is written in the heart must be what was written in the tablets. The same content. Because it does not say that God writes another thing. He simply says what was previously written upon tablets of stone now are written upon the heart. And therefore, it is now for the Christian sanctification that we obey the Ten Commandments because they are written in our hearts. For example, if you used to take your driver's license, uh, it took so long, and you have it uh, on paper material that's so breakable, uh, now it's differently uh, done, compute, computerized. So you can say two different media, uh, one on paper or uh, uh, some cover paper, board paper. Now it's computerized plastic. But the question is, what is written? If I get my driver's license, which I need to renew next year, uh, if I did that, I expect the same data there, my same name. And as long as I've not changed my address, the same address, but the same birth, same everything, but different uh, medium. And the same is true here. It's now a different medium. It is now the heart. But what is written is whatever is written on tablets. That means what is written on the heart now are the Ten Commandments. You have a sample here, I think, from uh, Pastor Ish of uh, submitting an outline. So, from JM, Pastor, regarding the Sabbath law, how can we reconcile rest when members are serving in ministries? Some, even for a whole day, will understand that rest there is not cessation of activities, just as God did not cease. His activities, his work, uh, he ceased from the six-day work, and that is the rest. Rest from that which pertains to your six-day livelihood, your six-day sustenance. So if you say, uh, I'm still going to work uh, in my business because it's more 
mas malaking kita pag Sunday business so that's violation because that is uh, precisely the rest that is mandated it is not rest of cessation of activities it is rest from that which pertains to the six days work so six days livelihood so uh, when your work as most of us have pastors are most weary on Sundays that does not mean that they violated the rest imperative it only means that rest is not to be understood as cessation of activity any other question <clears throat> well, again we will be continuing some of the other standards but these two are very fundamental in our understanding of the uh, norm for judging what is right and what is wrong back to creation mandates and to the Ten Commandments. Let's close in prayer. Hold me close till I get up. Time is 